Hello everyone, back to you in today's second video. So we're going to have a look at uh, Web Next Weekend Days for today's second video. It's kind of like a shortened uh, Gazweb Sunday roundup. So uh, we would normally have a sort of 20, 30 minute Sunday roundup uh, over lunchtime on a Sunday afternoon. But I'm running very late with everything today. I have problems accessing my website. There's all sorts of problems uh, with um, internet service. So uh, the upshot is I'm running late with everything. So uh, I'm just going to shorten uh, down today's second video. Earlier on today, we released the 10th uh, and final analogs update for the summer. So uh, that's currently here on the homepage. And later on today, it may be placed onto summer updates page. Because I'm so late with everything, that will probably be uh, placed onto the summer updates page tomorrow, actually, with the written uh, report. So I'm running about three or four hours late with everything today. So um, that probably gets placed on the Sunday updates page tomorrow, but the video is here on the homepage uh, right now. And sometime late this afternoon or this evening, there'll be that update I've been promising you about the uh, seasonal models of the E7UF and Metro France. So that will be um, posted sometime today, probably later than expected, but it will be turning up at some point this afternoon afternoon or this evening. But uh, I'll get on with your sort of uh, mini curtailed uh, Sunday roundup right now. We're going to begin by having a look at the reanalysis uh, for May so far. So this is how the 500 millibar height anomaly reanalysis re looks for May. Uh, 2018 and a uh, very anti-cyclonic month it's been as well with high pressure centered or above average heights as it's 500 millibar it, it extrapolates high pressure high pressure centered over Scandinavia and ridging down into uh, the UK and also back into the Atlantic as well so that sends a jet stream uh, up there uh, rather like that so on the warm side of the jet and closer ridge of high pressure that's a reason it's been such a warm and dry uh, May so far and this warm and dry weather looks like it's going to continue uh, for some time to come yet so this is how the central temperature is standing uh, for May 2018. Uh, it's provisional up to yesterday, 19th, and we're coming out at 12.0, an anomaly of 1.3 degrees above average. Maybe you'll probably expect that to be a little bit higher than that. Um, but we have had a few chilly nights over the past few nights in the CET region. I suspect this will lift up, though, in the next week. So uh, we may finish up quite close to 13 degrees with this, I think, when we get towards um, the end of the the month. So it's uh, certainly going to be a significantly warmer than average May and not really a surprise with such a high pressure dominated 500 millibar uh, reanalysis uh, such as we've seen, reanalysis pattern such as we've seen uh, through May 2018 so far. Uh, just a quick look at solar activity. So this is solar disk on outside of the disk today from solarham.net. We are completely spotless so there's no uh, sunspots at all on the solar disk. This would be Gaz Weatherby's Sunday Roundup Solar Activity Tracker. This is updated up to yesterday by our good friend James Apple. So big thanks James for updating this. Uh, and uh, we can see here that uh, the trends are beginning to move down again. So you remember last week uh, well, let's go back to March. So back in March, we went to a very low level of solar activity depicted by the green, uh, thick green and thick red lines, which are the trend lines. Uh, so really almost down to solar minimum type levels uh, back in March. Through April, actually see the uh, trend lines lifting up a little bit. Not dramatically so, because we are close to solar minimum anyway, but certainly more solar activity, more sunspots in uh, April compared to March. But now we see that the trends are just starting to edge down a little bit. Uh, again, the thick green and the thick red line just begin to move down. This orange line just here, that is the run of spotless uh, days that we've had on the so disc, on our side of the disc over the past few days. And the more spotless days we get, the more uh, these trend lines will slowly start to uh, dip downwards. So uh, that little burst of uh, uh, added solar activity we had back, back in uh, April hasn't really been sustained uh, as we've gone into uh, March. I would suspect, into May I should say, I would suspect that we will see uh, the trends moving downwards over the next few 
uh, over the next few weeks and the next couple of months. It'll be interesting to see how that works out. By the way, um, so Sunday has been penciled in for uh, the 11th of June. So uh, not long to wait before we have our new uh, Solar Sunday. Big thank you to James. Sandy Matt through as ever. Uh, trying to raffle through this as quick as I can because I'm running so late today. Uh, this is the um, uh, sea surface temperature anomaly map from uh, NOAA. This is from last week when we did the Sunday Roundup last week. The oceans looking like this. We're interested in three specific areas. Enso region uh, just there. Northern Pacific up here. And of course, we've got the Atlantic Ocean uh, over there. So that's how things were looking with the oceans this time last week. This how things are looking right now. Very latest chart from NOAA, updated uh, on the 17th of May. And we look like that. So we continue to unravel the uh, landing. We are back to ENSO neutral condition now through the uh, ENSO region. Still waiting to see where we're going to go in terms of ENSO through the uh, second half of the year. Going to have the um, May ENSO update coming up for you on Friday. That's going to be coming up at Gazov is on Friday. So perhaps have a uh, clear idea in that where things might be going in the second half of the year in terms of uh, ENSO. Further north, it looks like the oceans are, uh, the Pacific Ocean is warming up a little bit in the northern Pacific now. Not quite as cold, but over in the Atlantic, got a very strange uh, looking uh, anomaly indeed. So uh, across much of the northeastern part of the Atlantic, we've got this kind of like horseshoe shape of colder than average sea surface uh, temperature uh, anomalies. So that's sort of stretch from the west of the UK going down towards Spain and Portugal and then off into the coast of North Africa. But then we've got this really warm area that's starting to develop through this central um, part of the Atlantic Ocean over towards uh, kind of like uh, Newfoundland, that sort of area. Uh, or maybe a bit south of Newfoundland. But it's kind of like in the central part of the Atlantic Ocean, a little bit over towards um, the western uh, Atlantic, if anything. But it's a rather odd-looking pattern. I'm not sure what it's going to mean uh, for the summer. We'll have to try and do a bit of research, see whether that could mean anything particularly impactful uh, for the summer. But certainly around our part of the Atlantic Ocean, the sea surface temperature anomalies do look really cold now. They are cooling down. Uh, all the time, although you'll notice in the North Sea, it's now significantly warmer than average. Uh, oh, just a few weeks ago, it's very cold in the North Sea because of the cold weather that we had back in the late winter. Um, but I have been saying that the shallow waters around the UK, they are prone to uh, lifting up and actually dropping the temperature very quickly. And that's just proof of it, because now we've gone from those cold sea surface temperature noise that we had in the North Sea uh, around a month ago to uh, a much warmer sea surface temperature anomaly, just in response to the warm temperatures that we've been experiencing over the last few days. GFS ensembles look like this, looking at London today. The red line here is a 30-year upper air temperature average for London, uh, and basically just significantly above average from start to finish. So right now, that's where we are, uh, above average. Going to be a very warm week coming up in terms of those upper air temperatures. And into the extended range through here, generally, we're keeping the upper air temperatures at a warm to very warm level as well. So, um... Warm conditions going through to the end of May. This is the 1st of June just here, and it does look as though those upper air temperatures are really holding up through to the end of the month. The only change really is that there's a little bit more precipitation now being shown up. So we do have a few uh, rainfall spikes just there. Uh, a lot of that could be thundery showers actually coming up in the next few days. So um, I'll talk about that in a moment. We may have a risk of some heavy thundery showers, maybe thunderstorms across southern parts of England in the coming days. Uh, and then go through to the end of May and into the start of June. And a few precipitation spikes there as well. So it does look a little bit wetter now, the uh, GFS Ensemble. But still uh, very warm. And do bear in mind, a lot of those precipitation spikes are heavy showers. They're thunderstorms. So they'll be easy to miss. Uh, and a lot of pa uh, places will miss them and stay dry. So this is how the GFS is looking for Wednesday. We've got the high pressure up over Scandinavia. We're bringing in this easterly wind. Uh, uh, on Wednesday. So uh, we've got slack gradients to our south. There's a bit of a 
uh, disturbance within the 500 mm flow just across northern parts of France. So that it could again bring some heavy showers possibly to southern parts of the country through the middle of the week. This scenario continues through Thursday and possibly to Friday as well. So down in the south, actually, it is turning a little bit more showery than anticipated through the course of this week. But they are showers, so a lot of places will miss some stay dry. They'll be hit and miss. But if you get to one, you'll probably know about it because it's likely to be quite heavy and thundery. Into the bank holiday weekend, it looks like the high pressure is exerting its influence more, so I suspect things dry, uh, turn dry pretty much across all parts of the country through the first part of bank holiday weekend. Anyway, by bank holiday Monday, this is bank holiday Monday, Monday 28th of May, we're just beginning to see low pressure starting to try and push out of the Bay of Biscay and head north. So that could be bringing a renewed threat of thunderstorms for Bank Holiday Monday to the south and the southwest. It will be a very warm uh, Bank Holiday weekend with temperatures holding up into the uh, mid-20s Celsius. That looks potentially very thundery just beyond the Bank Holiday weekend. We're going towards day 10 now. This is Tuesday the 29th of May. Uh, I've got the low pressure just centred over northern France. So that could be bringing a lot of thundery weather into southern parts of the country. Maybe even more general areas of thundery rain can't be ruled out in the south. The driest weather will always be in the north, close to this area of high pressure we've got here, sitting to our north. We get to day 10, that's how we log. It still is uh, depicting quite a wet, and potentially quite thundery, scenario I think down from the south still warm don't get wrong the temperatures are still holding up but uh, that could be producing quite a lot of thundery weather down in the south these would be sort of classic thundery type charts where we've got the low pressure to the south really battling against this high pressure up to the north that high pressure does keep many northern parts of the country mostly dry into the extended uh, range with this latest run of the GFS and very gradually this high pressure pulls out to the west we start to through early June start to pull down some cooler, drier, uh, maybe slightly more unsettled weather from the uh, northern part of the Atlantic. That's a really long way off. They wouldn't take that particularly seriously. So these thundering uh, developments, I've got time to do Stormwatch today, but uh, I'm going to just throw this in. Thundering developments over the next few days. This is how uh, Monday's precipitation chart is looking at 6 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. So we've got a weather front that's in the northwest. It's quite weak at the moment. It's going to pep up overnight, bring a lot of heavy rain to uh, Northern Ireland and to much of Scotland as well. England and Wales at 6 o'clock in the morning tomorrow morning, mainly dry. But you see these showers are building across England and Wales through the course of tomorrow afternoon. This is 6 in the evening tomorrow, while that band of rain starts to weaken and die down in the northwest. So the focus is across England and Wales tomorrow for the risk of some heavy showers or even thunderstorms. That's cape and lifted. Haven't got tremendous levels of cape, but we've got enough there to suggest the risk of hail, thunder and lightning through the course of tomorrow afternoon in those showers across England and Wales. That's Tuesday's precipitation forecast at 6 in the evening. Uh, not as many showers, I don't think, on Tuesday, but there are still some down in the far south and southeast. And again, with the cape lifted, looking a bit like that, there is a bit of thundery potential within the atmosphere on Tuesday as well. Uh, Wednesday looks a mainly dry day. Any showers mostly restricted close to the southwestern coast. Uh, but most parts actually coming out with a dry day on Wednesday. The Cape and Lifted is uh, really just down in the southwest, but many parts of the country get a dry day on Wednesday. But that's Thursday's precipitation forecast at 6 in the evening on Thursday. Showers have become more widespread again across central southern parts of England and uh, Wales. Uh, we still, still have some Cape uh, there as well. So again, could be afternoon thundery showers and thunderstorms. And then we go through into Friday. It looks like we've got a more general area of rain trundling up the eastern side of the country on Friday. That could again be... Uh, a little bit fun. You notice throughout all of this, though, once this weather front that we've got at the moment uh, dies away across the northwest Scotland, Scotland and Northern Ireland actually having a mostly dry week, really, um, from Tuesday onwards, with all of the showers and thunderstorms tending to be in the south. Not as much cape around on uh, Friday. Um, so that's probably a more general area of rain that we've got moving up the eastern side of the country on Friday. But anyway, not quite as settled in the weekend as we perhaps for today or so ago. But do bear in mind, these are showers 
in the main. That on Friday is a more general area of rain, but really um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, it showers and they're probably quite well scattered. So I would suspect many places will come away with a dry and warm week. But if you were to happen to get one of these heavy showers or thunderstorms, you would um, know about it. That's how the ECMWF is looking for uh, Wednesday. So again, we've got this idea of high pressure being up to our north, northeast. Everything's very slack to our south. So the risk of thundery showers and thunderstorms would be with that in the south with northern areas getting the driest of the weather. Free to the end of the week, that kind of scenario continues. That's Friday. But again, the ridge is from Scandinavia to the northwest of the British Isles. Low pressure is to our south. So the greatest risk, of, greatest threat of thundery showers would be in the south. Into a bank holiday weekend, the high pressure exerts its influence. So after those thundery showers coming up in the weekend, I think by the weekend, it is mainly dry. Certainly the first part of the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, dominated by uh, high pressure and warm, maybe very warm too. Unlike what the GFS is showing, by Bank Holiday Monday, the ECM still keeps that high pressure in control. The thundery low that the GFS wants to move towards us on Bank Holiday Monday, that's still centred down there, down across Biscay in southern France. So most places still dry and very warm uh, on Bank Holiday Monday. Uh, we get through towards the extended range, that's day 10 as far as we can go, Wednesday the 30th of May, as far as we can go with the ECMWF. And at that point, it does look like pressure is beginning to lower across the south. So um, it takes a little bit longer to get there compared to the uh, GFS, but eventually the ECMWF uh, does sort of come up with the idea that it could start to turn uh, really quite thundery down in the south as we head towards the end of the month. And then finally, the GEM has that high pressure to the north and the northwest on uh, Wednesday with uh, slack gradients to the south. That's where the thundery showers or storms could be. We go into the bank holiday weekend, strengthening this area of high pressure. So similar to what the ECMDF is showing, the uh, GM certainly has high pressure dominating the weather through much of the bank holiday weekend. Does it go for that thundery breakdown on bank holiday Monday? No, actually keeps high pressure in control through to bank holiday Monday. So this is another classic bank holiday weekend coming up if this is right. We get to day 10 and no thundery breakdown, even by day 10, uh, Wednesday the 30th of May, that high pressure is still in control. Notice ever so slightly it's inching out towards the Atlantic, so it is moving towards our west. If we went on another day or two, we would probably start to pull down cooler air from the northwest. But essentially, through to the end of May, most of these models are looking very warm. It's just uh, how showery, how thundery it's going to get. The ECM and the GEM basically want to keep it very dry uh, right way through to month's end. But the GFS is more unsettled, uh, is more set on those heavy showers and thundery breakdowns um, coming along. So we'll have to monitor that. But certainly the next two or three days, we are going to be at risk of some thundery showers down in the south, particularly tomorrow. And then the shower risk probably diminishes quite a bit on Tuesday and Wednesday before coming back a bit on Thursday and Friday. And this is all down in the south, northern areas, once this band of wet weather we've got at the moment gets out of way. And that'll be on Tuesday. Northern areas actually have a mainly dry week with the thundery showers and storms generally focused on southern parts of the country. They will be hit and miss. Not everyone will get those showers and storms by any means. So a lot of places, even in the south, will have sort of like a completely dry and uh, very warm week. So a lot to keep our eye on. We'll probably have a storm watch. It won't be today because I, I think it's too late uh, to get that in for today. But uh, there'll probably be a storm watch coming up over the next day or so, I would have thought. Don't forget to check out the summer and logs. That video is right now here on the homepage above the bottom account. We'll probably get that onto the summer updates page tomorrow. Um, and coming up later on this afternoon or this evening, uh, be a bit later than anticipated, uh, will be that uh, seasonal um, that seasonal model update looking at the long range models from the ECMWF and Metro France uh, long range models that could take us through the summer towards the autumn. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.